So today I'm going to start um, showing you the hyperreal number system. The hyperreal number system is an extension of the real number system that includes infinities and infinitesimals. It's a way of doing calculus that was originally developed in the 1960s. Now, calculus itself, throughout its history, um, has had infinitesimals in it. The problem was is that prior to the 1960s, they weren't well defined. So in the 1800s, when uh, mathematicians were getting a lot more serious about how um, rigorous they wanted to have their mathematics, uh, using infinitesimals fell out of favor, in, um, and uh, calculus uh, was, was refounded based on limits. Uh, limits are fine. The problem is that they aren't very intuitive. In fact, uh, students actually have a tough time retaining information about limits. But now that we have the hyperreal number system, which is a rigorous way of dealing with infinities and infinitesimals, you actually don't need to use limits anymore, and you can actually do limit-like problems directly. So, um, it, within the hyperreal number system, you basically have uh, two new values. You have epsilon. It's kind of a curvy lower case, uh, a curvy uh, small e, um, and this is the infinitesimal unit. And then you have uh, omega, and it's this curvy w, and that's uh, the infinity unit. So this guy is infinitesimal. And this guy is infinity. Now, a lot of different uh, books use a lot of different notations for the hyperreals. Um, it's not very well standardized, so you'll, you'll see a lot of different things used. I use these two because they match uh, notation used elsewhere for similar purposes, but for non-hyperreal purposes. Um, so it's a it's an easy transition if you're used to thinking with these these two terms. Um, so epsilon is our infinitesimal. So that means epsilon is infinitely close to zero. So if you imagine a real number, um, you know real numbers, we think of them in decimal terms. and it goes on forever, okay? Now, let's say that we had a really small decimal number. We have a lot of zeros in front of this number, okay? And you can get a smaller number by putting more and more zeros out in front. You can think of an infinitesimal, this is just a way to think about it, it's not a rigorous way of explaining it, but you can think of uh, the infinitesimal, let me draw that a little better, um, the infinitesimal epsilon as being zero with an infinite number of zeros behind it, and then a one. Okay, so this is an infinitely small number. There's an infinite number of zeros behind it. So if I have the number epsilon, it is infinitely closer to zero than it is to any real value. Okay, so that's what this number is. It's infinitely close. I should say it's infinitely closer to zero than any um, other real value. So that's what that guy is. All right? So that's, um, so we can have numbers in the hyperreal number system. I can have five plus epsilon. And you can think about the notation kind of being the same way that you do complex numbers. So for example, in complex numbers, we have the i unit. And so, um, you know, you can have 5 plus i. Well, in the 
uh, hyperreal numbers, we can have 5 plus epsilon. So that is the number 5 with a infinitely small appendage attached. And you can do anything that you want to epsilon. We can have 5 plus 4 epsilon. Um, we can have um, 5 minus epsilon squared. Now if you square epsilon, uh, the way to think about that is that we would have a zero and we'd have an infinite number of zeros behind it. And then after that infinite number of zeros is finished, we'd have another set of infinite zeros behind it, and then we'd have a one, okay? So this is kind of the way to think about it. It's not, a, as I said, this is not a rigorous proof of it, but this is the way to think about it. So epsilon is, epsilon squared, you know, if you think about how decimals work, if I have 0 0.01 and I multiply that by 0 0.01, I'm gonna have four digits to the right of the decimal, okay? So if I have, if I have epsilon squared, that's going to be one value with an infinite number of, of, uh, of digits to the right of the decimal, and another value with infinite number of digits to the right of the decimal. So the result will have two sets of infinite number of digits to the right of the decimal. Okay, so that's how the hyperreal number system works. And so you can treat epsilon as an ordinary number. Um, just kind of the same way that you would um, that you would uh, i in the uh, in in complex imaginary numbers. Okay, so then similarly you have omega, and omega is simply one over epsilon. Okay, so that is a uh, that's our base infinity. Now you can just like any just like you can with epsilon, infinity, you can have infinity squared. You, so you can have a hyperreal number that is um, you know, we could have one half infinity squared minus infinity plus five minus three epsilon plus four epsilon squared. So this is a this is a number in the hyperreal system, okay? So um, now you might be wondering why you do this. Well, it allows us to do limits very easily. So let me show you a limit. So let's say that we have x squared minus twenty five divided by x um, x minus 5, okay? And I want the limit as x approaches 5, okay? Well, if I just put 5 in here, that's going to give me 25 minus 25 over 5 minus 5, and that's going to be 0 over zero, and you can't evaluate that. But, if we use hyperreal numbers, we can evaluate it directly. So if we think about it, what, what do we want when we want a limit? Okay, and so let's specify we want five coming from the right, okay? So if we come from the right, what is the nearest value to five? Well, the nearest value to five would be five plus an infinitely small value. So when I evaluate this, I can just replace x with 5 plus epsilon. And that gives me a value that isn't 5, but is infinitely close to 5. Okay, so I'm just going to replace this directly. And that's going to give me 5 plus epsilon minus 25 over... 5 plus epsilon minus 5, okay? So if I, when I simplify this, that'll give me 25 plus 10 epsilon plus epsilon squared minus 25 
all over, and 5 plus epsilon minus 5 is just epsilon. Well, here, I can mark out 25 minus 25 is 0, and I can uh, distribute this epsilon. So that's going to give me my final result is just 10 plus epsilon. And that's my final result. You say, well, that's if you actually take the limit, the limit is actually 10, not 10 plus epsilon. Okay, well, this is infinitely close. Um, to 10, okay? That value is infinitely close to 10. So how do we go from 10 plus epsilon to 10? Well, uh, the hyperreal number system introduced a new function called the standard value function, okay? So you can think of these hyperreal numbers as non-standard values. So here we have, in this case, we have 10 plus epsilon. That's a non-standard value. And the hyperreal number system introduced the standard value function. And this gives you the closest uh, standard value to a non-standard number. So if I have standard value of 10 plus epsilon, then the result is just 10. Okay, so if I have, so a couple of other standard values, if I have the standard value of epsilon, that's zero. If I have the standard value of 10 plus two epsilon plus epsilon squared, well notice that, so this is an infinitesimal value and this is a doubly infinitesimal value. So that is still gonna just give me 10. But we also have the infinity. Standard value of omega plus 10. Okay, well the closest value here, um, in the real number system, we don't have different levels of infinity. So all infinite values coalesce to this, which is the real infinity. And by real, I mean the infinity in the real numbers. So omega is the hyperreal infinity. And the and that symbol is the real infinity. Okay, and so all any infinite value, uh, the standard uh, the standard part will be real infinity because the real numbers don't uh, distinguish between their types of infinity. So you can see that this um, that using uh, that using hyperreal numbers for limits is actually super useful because you don't have to do all of those epsilon delta proofs. You can actually just do the computation directly. So now we did it. Um, we did our limit from the right. Uh, what happens about from the left? So our previous one, we did limit of x squared minus 25 for x minus 5 as x approaches 5 from the right. But what we really want, or what we want this time, is do it as we approach 5 from the left. Well, how will we approach 5 from the left? Well, the, from the left, we simply replace um, 5 with 5 minus an infinitely small number. And we repeat the process. Okay, so we will do, oh, 5 minus epsilon squared minus 25 over 5 minus epsilon 
minus 5. And this will give us 25 minus 10 epsilon plus epsilon squared minus 25 over 5 minus epsilon minus 5. And so these 20, this 25 and that negative 25 will cancel each other out. This 5 and this negative 5 will cancel each other out. And that will leave us with this fraction. Okay, But notice we've got a negative epsilon on the bottom. So let's just rewrite this to make it a little more clear. So we've got negative 10 epsilon plus epsilon squared over a negative epsilon. So if we divide out the negative sign, that will give us plus epsilon then minus epsilon squared then we can cancel out our epsilon and that will yield 10 minus epsilon. And if we take the standard part of 10 minus epsilon the result is just 10. So there we have we have the same value if we take the limit from the left or from the right. And so that way um, I hope you can see that using uh, hyperreal numbers allows for an extremely simplified mechanism for taking limits.